Hello, my name is Brian Zernicki. I'm the chair of uh, Breast Oncology Department here at Moffitt Cancer Center. And I wanted to discuss with you a um, new development um, that we have worked on in our laboratory here at Moffitt on the um, development of mutant ESR1 peptides for treatment of hormone re receptor positive metastatic breast cancer. The inventors of um, this um, technology or myself, Dr. Loretta Loftus and Gabrielle Alpert. Estrogen receptor or hormone um, active uh, breast cancer is the most common form of breast cancer. And um, these tumors are um, all express high levels usually of the estrogen receptor and progesterone receptors. Um, we generally treat them with um, anti-estrogen therapies, including aromatase inhibitors and um, SERMs or tamoxifen. But in patients that develop metastatic disease, many of them become resistant to endocrine therapy and subsequently fail and um, can go on and, and die from uh, metastatic breast cancer. There are a couple of mechanisms by which the um, tumors become resistant. One is that there's a, a loss of estrogen receptors on the surface or, or, or estrogen and progesterone and the tumors either become triple negative or HER2 positive. The second is that one of the other um, pathway molecules um, acts as a buffer to um, down uh, play the estrogen receptor signaling. And one of these would be through um, like HER2 um, signaling or HER3 signaling, and we've developed vaccines against those molecules that can be combined with anti-estrogen therapy for treatment of resistant endocrine um, therapy. But the last route is the fact that um, many of these patients, almost half, develop mutations in the estrogen receptor, the ER alpha receptor. The, the estrogen receptor consists of two, um, an alpha and a beta chain, and in the alpha region, there are known mutations that happen in select sites that controls um, the responsiveness to estrogen. These mutations are known and they can be um, obtained through um, genomic testing. In, in this slide, you see that there's 11 different um, known point mutations that happen in um, several of the uh, places. And what we hypothesized is that um, these point mutations would make a potential neoantigen or a site that the immune system may be able to recognize. And so we designed um, peptides spanning across these uh, known mutations as a way to see if the immune response can um, see these mutated peptides as different than the native estrogen receptor. This is an example of one of the sites where different peptides are um, known to be mutated. It's um, peptide number 537. And um, these are different um, healthy donors. And what we did is we, mute, we created peptides across these different mutations. And as you can see from the blue bars, um, if we cultured um, their own CD4 lymphocytes with their own antigen presenting cell in a culture for a, for a week, just simply a week, the blue bars are showing the amount of gamma interferon that's specifically released in response to that peptide mutation. And in this case, you can see that there are many of these um, blue bars that are arising to the extreme right of the um, of the graphs is the native peptides where there are not many blue bars that are above the background. So what you see is that the mutated peptides drive a substantial immune response. We've also shown the same thing with another common mutation here, 538, where it's um, a peptide has been uh, substituted. And again, you can see that there's an increase recognition by the immune response, and they respond by releasing um, an immune cytokine called gamma interferon, again, after a one week. And what you see is the native peptides over on the right side do not drive such an immune response. So we've been able to do this 
for all of the uh, mutations, and I'm not going to show you all the data through there, but this is a, a summary chart of the most popular ones. And we can personalize these peptides to the uh, mutation that the um, breast cancer patient would have, and it will offer us an opportunity to target the immune response to these mutated estrogen um, receptor uh, proteins. So what would that mean from a clinical development? Well, we could make vaccines that recognize the patient's um, mutation. We can um, pulse them either on dendritic cells or administer them with adjuvants um, as a vaccine to prime a CD4 immune response against that specific mutation. We can combine um, native receptor, ER receptor peptides with them as well, because we have areas of the native ER receptor that we've been able to generate immune responses to. They are not the same location as, the, um, as where the mutations occur, but we can combine them to avoid um, resistance um, by selecting only the mutated, we can also um, extinguish or eliminate cells that have the native estrogen receptor. And we can, um, we can prime um, against oncodrivers HER2 and HER3 for those where the estrogen receptor is resistant, but it's mediated because of overexpression or increased expression of HER2 and HER3. All of those therapies can, can be, be combined with um, antibodies against PD-1 or checkpoint as these are potent neoantigens. The other method that we can develop is an adoptive T cell strategy where we can prime the patient as a vaccine and, and grab their CD4 lymphocytes from the blood through either blood draws or an apheresis. And then we can expand their specific ESR1 mutation um, CD4 cells and we can expand these cells to very large numbers using IL-7 or IL-15 to help drive their differentiation. And we can differentiate them into Th1 or Th2 or Th9 or T helper follicular cells, and they can be adoptively transferred back to treat their metastatic um, breast cancer um, against that specific ESR mutation. So um, this is the, a summary of the, um, the technology that um, we've developed. We think it's an exciting uh, process and we're beginning to um, test this in animal models. And we are uh, also gonna be developing human clinical trials in combination with uh, neoantigens.